Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it is time for another Orc Mode workout. Today was Max Effort Press Day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. So, over to the pressing. Uh, we did pretty good today. I went with heavier chains. I went with 64 pounds of chains. And ended up getting up to 295. It felt pretty heavy. Uh, I don't know how much more I had in the tank. I don't think it would have been a lot. But when I went back and checked through my notes, this is a heavier chain press even compared to my close gripping when I hit my 352 close grip the two different times I hit it. Uh, when my shoulder was better, my chain presses were a hair weaker than this as far as running this much chain, right? And people might be like, yeah, but you got 315 with chains the other day, but that was 24 pounds less chains. So in terms of the lockout itself, this was a little more at the lockout. So, and what I have historically found, and I'm going to see soon if this carries over to the, the wider grip bench like this, but when I was close gripping, whatever I could lock out at the top was usually no more than 5 to 10 pounds from my true max in straight weight. So, in other words, what, what do we mean there? Uh, if, if I could do 300 with 50 pounds of chains when I would go to straight weight with no chains, I could hit 340 to 345. Just to put it in perspective. So we're, we're definitely coming along really well here. Coming along really well. I uh, got pressing PRs on the other lift today. Actually, I was really happy with everything in today's workout other than the dips, of all things. I decided to do dips instead of JM presses. I was really unhappy with them. I have not seen the footage yet. I flipped it into here and haven't actually watched the sets. I was unhappy with how they felt. And I'll get to that when we get there. But my thought was, hey, I feel like doing some bigger multi-joint movements for triceps, right? I could probably get more overall growth from it. Dips would be great and get more chest involvement. But here's the thing. Uh, I don't know that I need more chest involvement. I'm consistently getting better at flat bench and incline. My incline's coming up really fast. I think my chest is getting plenty of work. When I do triceps, I need to be fo focused more on triceps. So with the bench... Uh, we got small PR. I got a little worried because when I did 280 last time, the 3x5 felt pretty tough. I didn't feel like I had another rep, so I decided to microload it up. Uh, the first two sets with 282 and a half, I got five. They felt challenging. I didn't know if I had another rep, but I took a nice long break for the third one because, again, I just hit a max. Dug in, kind of psyched myself up a little bit, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get in and I'm going to am rep it. And I got six. Okay, I got six, and that last rep was a nice, good, solid pause for the sixth rep, and it felt tough. I don't think I had a seventh rep, okay? I don't think I had another rep after that, but it was interesting because I felt like with the first two, the fives, I wasn't sure if I had another rep. Maybe. I was 50-50, but again, a nice long break let me dig in a little deeper, got focused, got tight, and managed to get six. Now, notice that last one was real slow. So there I'm like really saying, yeah, I probably don't have another rep. Might have got pinned. Then I went over to my pin lay rows. And in keeping with what I did last workout, um, I kept them down at 285. I got 5.5 five and then hit 6. Trying to stay a little stricter with these now that I'm gone down to 5s. And again, what I have to point out to people, if I base what I could do my 10 rep sets on and carry the math over, I should be able to do the 295 or 5s. But I'm cheating a little bit on them when I was doing 295. And it's mainly because it's so much heavier. It's significantly more weight. And it's super hard to stay strict. So I'm trying to stay a hair stricter on these. While still staying in that lower rep range. So that we're, we're getting real heavy work. Getting a lot of mechanical tension in. But I'm getting more volume with my other rowing. I really want to get that tension in with this. Um, and particularly is if, if I can get to the point where I can do chin-ups again. Which I'm not going to rule out. Uh, the shoulder stuff is doing really, really good with the dead hangs. Um, I'm up to where now I can do, I just drop the strap so that I just hold on. Because at first it hurt so bad I had to strap up for it. Because I turned loose of the, of the bar. I'm up to, you know, about 23 to 25 seconds for my holds. Just holding on without straps, my full body weight. And I would call it uncomfortable. But it's no longer a pain. So the shoulder health is improving, and what did I say? When it's no longer any pain for 30 seconds, 
I'm not counting what I'm doing now as, as no pain because there's still quite a bit of it's very uncomfortable. It's borderline pain. When I can do them where there, it's like, mm, this isn't really bothering me, then we're in a good spot. So until then, it's going to be all row variations, and we did three rows today. Incline bench, this went great. You know what? Since I got the 215 last time for six, Michael, let's go to 220. Let's go to 220. I got two sets of five. I got to the last set. Again, got in my zone, said, you know what? I can get six. I got to the sixth rep, and I'm like, I can do another rep. I got seven. Now... It was not that long ago we were doing fives with 20 pounds less than this. Hey, okay. I got seven reps, and these are paused. These are paused. I think a lot of it is, is my upper chest and my shoulders are getting stronger again, rebuilding the strength. Now that my shoulder will let me, that's a factor. I think it's also me learning how to incline bench. I've really found my groove. For me, the groove is to get the bar below the nipple, just like with the bench. I'm way low. When I'm benching on, on, that, on the bench work, too, people may not realize it, but I'm touching my stomach. I am not touching my chest. I'm benching very low. It seems to work a lot better for me when my grip isn't close grip. When I'm close grip, I'm up higher. I'm like an inch under the nipple when I've hit those two, you know, the 350 close grips. That's where I'm at. This wide, when I go to a wider grip, I do a lot better biomechanically down low, and the incline's the same way. It feels a lot better on my shoulders, I feel more powerful out of the bottom, right? Feel powerful out of the bottom. And yes, I'm using leg drive, and that's okay. When you get tight, it's hard not to use leg drive. You know, I've always had people ask that on, on benching, or oh, how do you use leg drive? If you have to learn how to use leg drive, you're too loose, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. If someone has to show you how to, if you have to consciously use leg drive, you're too loose. If you're tight, leg drive happens by default. You're too loose. But I'm real happy with that incline. That means I can go up to 225 for my work sets. It's a nice milestone for me. And, and getting my bench back up. Uh, these were hard today, by the way. The, pen, the, the axle bar rows, I went up two and a half pounds. I'm like, you know what, I feel like I can do it. I got all my reps, but man, were they hard on my grip. But let's look at that again. Wasn't that long ago when this is what I was doing for 10s. With a normal bar my grip strength is coming along great we're going to keep at it but it's coming along very happy with this very happy with it uh, even though they were challenging they were tough having to reset that grip each time and that third set was hard i was worried i wasn't going to get the last two to three reps with the grip but i got them but that's the thing on this when i make even a two and a half pound increase i feel at a five pound i definitely feel it the grip difference but it's coming up we're getting there we are getting there it's happening so that that grip weakness is is improving it's improving a lot and i guess we'll find out because i'm not going to do much deadlifting for a while i'm just going to place good morning matches for the for the deadlift matches and i think whenever i'm ready to pull i may just eventually come in and just start testing a conventional deadlift however often once i feel like the grip is caught up enough I may just not even mess with deadlift variations. Just maybe once a month, just come in and do a pull. Nice heavy pull, see where my deadlift is. Straight up deadlift. Normal conventional, no, no bands, no chains. And then people can quit talking about it, right? You know, I'm gonna be doing a lot of box squatting. So people, we're gonna talk about, oh, or he's, look what he's box squatting, none of this counts. So they'll just have deadlifts to look at and they'll have a lot of benching to look at. Dips. My thought here was dips hit my triceps really hard. I just wanted to change up from the JM presses. I uh, wanted a good big multi-joint exercise. Hey, I'll get some extra, extra chest work. These were really uncomfortable in my shoulders today. You know, my shoulders have been doing great. This did not feel good on my shoulders. I stopped at two sets. And it's just like, wow, okay, everything else is good. Benching has been good on my shoulders. Incline has been good. And incline used to really hurt. It's all good. Why are dips hurting? And that sucks because dips are a great tricep exercise. I mean, they hammer mine hard. And I need the extra tricep right now. You know, I need more tricep. So it really sucks that these were not comfortable on my shoulder. I was really hoping to make use of these. I'm not happy about it. 
I just did two sets of 10 with a 45 and I'm like, that's it. I don't want to beat my shoulders up any further. I can't risk it. This exercise right now is not working for me. And, and maybe if I did chin ups, they might feel just as bad at this moment. So I'm not doing them. You know, we're doing what we can. And I was hoping, hey, this will give me a third pressing angle. It's a very tricep dominant movement. We'll be good. Nope. So I guess I'll just go back and mess with JM press variations again, right? They've been working well for me. All my pressing's going up. They're helping. They hit my triceps super hard, and my triceps need to get bigger. I mean, we can look there until I need more tricep. We, we know that's a, a looks like a limitation, even though I feel like it's not limiting my bench right now. I feel my triceps a lot on the rep work on benching. They get a great pump, but I don't feel like my triceps are limiting my maxes at the moment. They really aren't, even with the bands and chains, not with the wider grip. But we have to be sure of it, you know. So I think the JM presses may be in. And if I eventually I get to a point where I don't feel like the triceps need that extra work, I can replace it with an overhead press to get even more shoulder because it still hits triceps too, right? Uh, but we did supine grip inverted rows. I did three sets of 16 feet up on the bench. It's a lot harder feet on the bench. I can do obviously a lot more reps with feet on the floor. More of our weight gets used in it. Uh, three sets of 16. I forgot to throw on a belt for these. People will notice that, well, why do you wear belts on everything? I've told you guys repeatedly why we wear belts. You know why we wear If you follow this channel, and you've been following this channel for the last two years, you know why we wear belts. I have done multiple videos on it, and why I even changed my stance years ago about training and gone over it almost exclusively belted. You know why we wear belts. I forgot to wear one, and that's okay. I need to add weight, and then that'll give me an excuse to remember to throw the belt back on because I've got to throw some chains over me. I need to add weight on these. They went good. Good pump in the biceps. Good pump in the lats. That's what I want. Same reason I would do a chin-up. That's where this comes in. Since I'm not ready to do chin-ups at this time, it'll give me the bicep work I want, though, so that I don't have to do curls. Because, again, curls can cause shoulder problems, too, and people aren't aware of that. They don't look at the biomechanics. It's a reason certain types of athletes do not do curls. All right, that'll give me bicep work without a curl. Of course, then I still did a single joint movement. We did a lateral raises. And as I've said before, if there's any muscle in the upper body that could probably benefit from a single joint exercise, it's the delts. Let's be realistic here. When we look at the complexity of it, unless you're doing very careful with all your movements, and I don't feel comfortable doing snatch grip high pulls right now or even hang pulls, which could be just as good or better than this right now. I don't know that I should be doing them at the moment. So we're not doing them at the moment. This works. Making sure I'm getting some extra delt work, hitting the upper trap, side delts, all that. Fur delts and front delts are getting hit pretty effectively. This is just getting that little bit that's not, just in case. Uh, we did two sets of 15 and I think I got like 16 on the last set when I took it to failure. So again, did do a single joint movement here, again, just for side delts. Um, and again, only thing I've been unhappy with today was those, was those dips. So I guess it's JM presses for a bit. And then if I feel like other tricep variations, I'll throw them in. Yeah, but with JM presses, I can make like six different exercises at JM press of what I have. All right, we've got options. So it's not a big deal. So good workout. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.